In the social media welding system, the channels are represented by two separate but equally important groups, the channels that create the content and the professionals who know what they are doing. These are their welds. This isn't cold MIG welding. Or is it? Now you might have seen a few of those silly metal crafting videos once or twice showing the so-called technique before and maybe you thought it was something special. Now if you haven't seen one of these types of videos before, consider yourself lucky and I'll just try to sum it up here. Craft videos basically show the viewers how to create something with ease, like no skill required. Now some of the crafty solutions are pretty absurd, like making a hammer out of a hammer so you can remove a pesky screw from a board. I mean, it, it kind of works, right? But common sense seems to not apply, like using an adjustable wrench and a screwdriver to remove a bolt. Okay, maybe I stretched that last one just a little bit there, right? But the only reason I'm bringing this up here is that there has been an uptick of welding and metalworking videos which show a clever looking MIG process that is kind of reminiscent of that BS cold welding TIG machine I busted a while back. Now, those of you who follow this channel know that I take welding education seriously since that is my profession. So when my inbox blows up about this fake process here, well, of course I gotta make a video about it. But why is talking about this fake technique all so important? Well, it's because MIG welding is kind of like hot glue for metal, but what we're holding together isn't craft paper. Whatever you stick together has got to do more than just stick together. Whether it's a 4,000 pound art installation that was knocked off its pedestal by an SUV, or it's a hacked hammer mod, it's got to hold. Ah! Now MIG is an acronym for anyone can weld. The first letters of each word are silent. Bullshit. Okay, okay. It stands for metal inert gas. How it works is this little piece of wire is electrified when you pull the trigger, which creates an arc of electricity that melts the base metal. At the same time, the wire that is being pushed or driven through the lead melts up in blobs, which falls into the molten weld pool, which basically sticks it all together. The gas keeps the molten metal protected from the atmosphere until it cools down. The crazy part on this is how many times it does this in one second. That buzzing sound you hear is every single time that process happens. Just take a look at this really, really short clip here. That little bit of a buzz there, which was less than one second, was 64 times that the wire spit out of the machine, made contact with metal, and burned back and deposited the blob. 64 times in less than one second. But to truly appreciate the magic of what's actually happening here, you gotta watch it in slow motion. It's kind of a beautiful thing. Now, before we get into showing you why this cold welding thing is totally fake, we kind of have to first understand the different techniques to MIG welding, which are pretty much as follows. The first is pulling the trigger and controlling the pool from point A to point B. This is generally the fastest way to do it, and it's the way that I normally do it. Some people call it robotic MIG welding. You hold it at a nice steady height, keep it a very good pace, in, out, hello, goodbye. This is about what it looks like. Nothing really spectacular, but it's definitely going to hold. The second method is to kind of dress it up a little bit. You pull the trigger, you whip it, you stack it, you swirl it, triangle it, zigzag it, cursive ease, whatever the case is. Most people kind of do this to make it look nice and uniform, but there's other reasons to do it, like puddle control, manipulation, having to actually move the weld pool or the bead to one side or the other, but I don't typically do this, so it doesn't look all that pretty here. It's not normally my style, but uh, you get the general gist of it. The third method is to drop the wire feed speed way down, which actually makes you go really, really friggin' slow. But it gives you the time to actually physically stack up a giant glob of metal, which kind of puts it into this little row of dimes or whatever, and they call this process MIG-like TIG, because it's supposed to kind of mimic a TIG, or what a TIG looks like with the fancy stacks and rows. Uh, 
yeah, I get it. I know why people do it. But truthfully, it's a waste of time. It takes forever. And if you want it to make it look like a TIG, then you should just grab a TIG and TIG weld it. But I digress a little bit. I get why people do it. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good either. But this is kind of what that looks like. I'm not the greatest at it. The fourth and final method is called the stitch. Now this is achieved by pulling the trigger, letting it blast tack for just a couple seconds here, letting off the trigger, advancing forward, and then repeating. Pull the trigger, stop, pull the trigger, stop, pull the trigger, stop. You can usually spot these things by the big old dimple that's sitting on top of each and every bead, something we call a fisheye, which is usually done by the people in the industry that we say have the biggest commitment issues. It is a total joke of welding. But there is a useful and technical process for stitching on thin metal, things like body panels for cars. But it's not for making pretty welds because stitch welds on body panels get ground back down and covered with filler and paint. The bad stitch welds done by those with commitment issues are the ones that are done on things like chassis, roll cages, suspension parts, and stuff like that. Literally, they just need to learn how to weld because at the end of the day, the parts end up being too cold. And this is exactly where we get into this new cold MIG welding technique. Now, I'm sorry to bust your bubble, but this is just stitching with clever editing. Now, I'll show you how that's done in just a moment, but first we need to understand what a cold weld is. Now, a cold weld, in industry terms, is a weld that lacks strength because it lacks fusion. In order for a MIG weld to hold successfully, it needs to have enough time to heat up and liquefy the base metal and then fuse all the pieces together with the wire holding it. This piece of metal here shows full penetration, as you can see what looks like a weld on both sides. This piece, on the other hand, shows about half of that, meaning that the weld time was cut way too short. Now here's the both proper and improper stitch welds side by side. With those cute little ticky tacky commitment issue blasts, we don't have enough time to fully penetrate. And what does that mean to the part? Well, simple. It just doesn't hold. When it doesn't hold, that means the weld is cold. The rising popularity of these little metal hack videos, or whatever you want to call them, cleverly disguises the actual process and a skill by showing you something clever that was made by skipping over some of the important stuff, like having a skill and knowing how to use it. In other words, this cold MIG welding is not a new solution to not knowing how to weld. It's just funny editing. So in order to make this edit look really good or convincing, you'll first need to set your camera up in manual mode. All of your adjustments should be locked in one position with a high f-stop so that you don't lose focus, which also has to be set in manual. You should have sufficient lighting to make the shot appear natural and without any changes to your weld. Next, get yourself into position. To really sell this as a legitimate technique, you must be still and braced. The only time you should move is before or after you release the trigger. If you move too much or you're too jumpy, the final edit will look twitchy. It may take a few tries to get just the perfect take. Now make yourself some quick tacks. Remember to move only before and after the tack itself. Do not move while you are welding. You also shouldn't pause for too long after each tack. Try moving consistently. Once you're finished, take it into your favorite editor and import your video clip along with the audio. The audio really helps sell it and makes the editing a little bit easier. Now scrub through the clip until you get to the first tack. Now track either forward or backward frame by frame until you see the first bit of light from the weld and cut the track at the first frame before you see the arc light. Now scrub to the end of the weld and cut the track right when the arc light disappears. I personally like to keep a couple of remaining sparks in the shot as they settle. It really helps to make it look like it is an actual process when you do that. Once you have cut out every section containing the arc light, delete them and merge the remaining clips to play continuously. I like to nest all the individual clips together so that way they play as one clip. I can color grade it, speed it up, crop it, change the audio, whatever it is that I need. Now all you gotta do is send it to the internet. And I'm gonna forewarn you on this one that you might get some uh, hate comments because uh, a lot of people, for one, despise this style of welding, like the spot welding and stuff like that. And other people just flat out don't realize, if you do a really good edit, they don't realize that what they hate doesn't exist. It's completely fake. So, you know, fair warning. I was kind of surprised on some of the comments uh, I saw on my site, but hey, it's all good. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Good luck to you. And no, this is not really cold MIG welding. Like, it's fake. See you all in the next round.